Well, with the popularity of Davy Crockett the movie and the show being so successful, they of course had to make a sequel. But how the hell do you do that? You see Davy Crockett die in the last film. Well, this one they straight up say is a pure legend. In that, it's completely fictionalized. In that, there may have been a Mike Fink, him and Davy Crockett may have crossed paths at some point, but that's where the history stops. There's no other truth in this. Hell, they even straight up admitted in the song. But most of his chores for freedom and fun got turned into legends, and this here is one. And as one of these totally unneeded sequels just glorifying a myth goes, it's a lot of fun. Not for Davy, not for his partner Russell, but for Mike Fink. Oh my god, this guy is so enjoyable to watch. He is just the right amount of over the top. He's goofy, he's big-eyed, he's always got his mouth open, he's always drinking or smoking a cigar. He's always fighting, he's always punching, he's always looking to get in trouble. You just love this guy. Listen to what a loudmouth he is. I am the original ringtail roarer from the Thunder and Lightning country. I'm a real snorter and a headbuster. I can outrun, out jump, out sing, out swim, out dance, out shoot, out eat, out break, out talk. Yeah, out talk. Look at his expressions. Nothing he does is subtle, but it's just so. Oh my God! You can't stop watching him. Why, that's playing on civilized piracy. <laughs> Ain't no question about it. Now make up your minds and let me know before morning. You keep me from my drinking. He just steals every single scene that he's in, and it just makes for a great time. Which is good because the story, or stories, there's two in this one, are kind of lackluster. Russell gets drunk and accidentally challenges Mike Fink into a boat race. Mike Fink of course agrees, knowing that Davy and his crew know absolutely nothing about doing any boat work. But through hard work, determination, and their own theme song, they find the courage to actually be a fitting match. While the first half is about the race, the second half totally changes direction. Mike Fink and Davey become friends, and now they're on the lookout to stop some sort of Native American scheme where people dress up like Native Americans in order to rob people, and that's gonna start a war between the white man and them again. Yeah, it's kinda silly. But I, who cares? It gives a chance for Mike Fink to be in more of the movie, and I'm totally okay with that. But to the film's credit, it's not all Mike Fink and his gang. I mean, Davy Crockett is still Davy Crockett, and Russell is still Russell. They're both really charming. And once in a while, you come across another funny character. For example, there's this one guy who sends messages in code to a bunch of smugglers about what the boat is carrying. If a boat is carrying gold, he'll sing about a woman who has hair just like gold. And that'll be the cue to rob it. The color of yaller, yaller, yaller gold. This makes for a really funny scene when he discovers that it's actually Davy Crockett and Mike Fink, and how he tries to subtly alert them of what's going on. I thought maybe you fellas might like to hear a little music. It's Crockett and Fink, and down in the hole, there's a cannon and spread a yellow It all builds up to a climax with the smugglers, and it's just kind of goofy, silly, hokey goofiness. Which I loved as a kid, and I gotta be honest, I kinda still like as an adult. It's the same reason I like the original Davy Crockett. It's just totally glorifying the myth and lore, except this time throwing in a little bit of comedy. But the comedy works! So if you're looking for a lighter version of the Davy Crockett story, maybe without the heavier moments, I say this is a good one to check out. Nothing spectacular, just the right amount of excitement and laughs. Davy, Davy Crockett, tangling with big 